In this kind of problem, we want to calculate a confidence interval for a mean in a special case where sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. In this situation, we have a simple random sample of 50 adults, and we've measured their red blood cell count in millions of cells per microliter. We've calculated a sample mean, and now we're assuming we know the population standard deviation of 0.54. Now that's not often the case, and it's not always a reasonable estimate, but for this kind of problem we are going to assume that we know sigma. And that's the key distinction between this kind of problem and the one we're going to do in the next section when we calculate a confidence interval for a mean when we don't know sigma, we just have s, a sample standard deviation. So we have six different questions. We're going to go through and answer those one at a time. The first question is, what's the best point estimate of the mean red blood cell count for adults? Now we know two things. We know the sample mean is 4.63, and the sample mean is a point estimate. It's also an unbiased point estimate. Unbiased just simply means that if I take larger and larger samples, I'm guaranteed to eventually get as close to the true population mean. Remember, mu is unknown. It's unknowable, it's too expensive, it takes too much time. For all practical purposes, we'll never know what mu, the population mean, is. So we take a sample of size 50, and we calculate x bar, a sample mean, or a sample statistic. And that is going to be our best point estimate for the unknown population mean, mu. Now let's begin the process to calculate the confidence interval. We want to calculate a 99% confidence interval. When you start these problems, the first thing I want you to do is identify the parameter. What are we studying? Well, in this case, what we're studying is a mu, it's a mean, and it's the mean red blood cell count in adults. The sample size is 50, and the sample was random. So now we ask ourselves, have we satisfied the requirements to use the technique that we used in this section? And basically that's asking, have we satisfied the requirements for the central limit theorem? Well, in that case, one of two things have to be true. Either the sample that we're, sample size that we took has to be greater than 30, or the population we're sampling from has to be normal. Well, in this case, sample size is 50. That's well above 30, so there's no problem we can proceed. Once you've identified the parameter and you've verified the requirements, the next thing I want you to do is look at each number in the paragraph, read it carefully, and each number there deserves its proper uh, statistical symbol. The 0.54 is a sigma. It's not an S. It's a sigma, a population standard deviation. 4.63 is an X bar. Our confidence level is 99%, and we'll write that as a... a uh, ratio or 0.99 and the sample size is 50. <clears throat> now the next step to calculate the confidence interval is I need to know alpha. Well 1 minus the confidence level or 1 minus 0.99 is 0.01 and that's alpha and actually what I use is alpha over 2. In, cal in uh, calculating the confidence interval we use the confidence level, 0.99 in this case, and we put that much area or probability right in the middle of our distribution. Then off to the left and to the right tail, we put what's remaining, half on each side, and that's why it ends up being alpha over 2, or 0 0.005 in this case. Now we need a z value on the left tail that has 0 0.005 probability to the left, and we need a z-value on the right tail that has 0 0.005 probability to the right. We know how to get those using the inverse norm functions, and we end up with minus 2.576 and 2.576. Now with that information, we're ready to start the uh, process to calculate the margin of error. Uh, our formula for the margin of error is right here. 
In this case, alpha over 2 is point z, z sub uh, point zero zero 0.005. That's my critical value. I already know sigma and the square root of n. So when I substitute those values in for my for the, in the expression for my particular problem, I get a margin of error of 0.197 million cells per microliter. We use the margin of error in combination with the point estimate to create the confidence interval. The confidence interval is the point estimate, or x bar. Then I go either e to the right and then back e to the left, e, x bar plus or minus e. Or I'd write that in the notation x bar minus e comma 2 x bar plus e. When I do the arithmetic, I get 4.433 to 4.827. Now when you write a confidence interval, when you solve one of those problems, there's three pieces to it, and we've just solved the first one. We have the numerical range. I want you to write it as an inequality so that it's clear that what we are studying is mu, the population mean, and it's between 4.433 and 4.827. That's the interval we found, a confidence interval for the mean. And then finally, we conclude by providing an English sentence that summarizes our findings. In this case, we'd say I'm 99% confident that the interval from 4.433 to 4.827 contains the true mean red blood cell count. All right, well, let's answer the next question now, and it's <clears throat> kind of going in the reverse. In this case, we assume we have a margin of error. In fact, it's the maximum margin of error we would wish. Using that, I like to work backwards and calculate the sample size. When we calculate sample size, you always have to first have a confidence level in mind. So now this is the 99% confidence level and I want my E, my margin of error, to be no more than 0.5. And in context of this problem, that would mean 0.5 cells per microliter. Well, how many should I sample? We have the formula for N, and we have all the numbers that go into the formula. So we plug them into the calculator, and we get 7.7. .7. In this kind of a problem, we'd always round up, and that means we need to randomly sample eight adults to have a 99% confidence interval with a margin of error of no more than 0.5. Now the next question says if I increase the sample size what happens to the confidence interval? Well we know that as the width <coughs> the width of the confidence interval decreases as the sample size n increases. Larger samples give us more confidence in our point estimates. That means our margin of error is smaller. Now, it might seem a little bit contradictory, but just the opposite is the case when we ask about the confidence level. As I decrease the confidence level, I actually decrease the width of the confidence interval. Now, the final question. We're saying that a study conducted over 50 years ago in 1960 determined that the mean blood cell count of adults is 4.2. Now this is a mu. They did an exhaustive study in 1960 and stated that we believe that mu is equal to 4.2. Based on our recent study, should we revise this uh, finding from 1960? Okay, well we can answer that question. Our 99% confidence interval was from 4.43 to 4.287. The value found in 1960, 4.2 was within that is not within that confidence interval. It's outside it, it's a little bit to the left. So our results suggest that the original value should be revised, that 4.2 is no longer accurate. Now note we're not saying what the new value should be. But we're just saying that 4.2 is not in our 99% confidence interval, so it looks like we should repeat the study of 1960 and come up with a new value for mu, the mean red blood cell count.